Give me some runs. Don't worry, Spark. Travis Fryman comes a few feet short of parking, and he hits the lotto. No, he hit the sign and hit the lotto, but it, it makes it 2 nothing Detroit. Maybe that's the only way we'll, any of us will ever hit the lotto. Next batter, Cecil Fielder, ropes at the left, scoring Lou Whitaker. The round is on, 13-2 to two was the final. Only one home run. That was uh, uh, Gibson's, uh, Kirk Gibson's eighth of the season. Oh, by the way, Bill Gullickson wins his sixth start in a row. He's 10-0 and lifetime against Seattle. The time what happened, yes, Ricky does have some friends in Oakland, even though he doesn't play for the home team anymore. Some good defense in the game. Mike Aldredi with a sliding catch to Rob Paul Molitor in foul ground. But this night would belong to Ricky. As he jacks, yes, a home run to left field. His 18th of the season. This makes it three to nothing, Toronto. Pat Hankin having another good outing as he sets down Ruben Sierra, not once, not twice, but three times. Give the man the silver sombrero. Dwayne Ward, not yes, we know he's angry. Dwayne Ward on the pitch tonight. He'd get Henderson, that's Dave, Craig Paquette, and Scott Heeman once each. Cito Gaston. His team back in first place, all by the lonesome, a half game ahead of the Yankees. Pat Henkin now 10-1 on the road this season, but 400 may be out of reach for John Olroot. He went 0-4 Monday night, his average dropping to 382. The Boston Red Sox hosting Texas, and that's Jeff Russell, their closer. He's on the 15-day DL with an ankle injury. So Frank Viola knew he'd have to do the bulk of the work. Seven and a third innings he went, and he was strong. Got Rob Ducey there. In the bottom of the fourth, Boston would give him the necessary support. Houston in at third, replacing the injured Dean Palmer. With the bases loaded, Muffs a possible inning-ending DP. That made it two-zip. And then Kevin Brown... First box in a run and gives up this double to right. Andre Dawson and Deer come around. 5-0 Boston. Ken Ryan comes on to finish the job. And is that Jeff Russell on the mound? Sure looked like it to me. No, Russell's on the DL, but Ryan did the job as he got Manny Lee to end the game. Boston wins at 7-3. Viola winning his fifth straight decision. Julio Franco's hitting streak is gone at 14. Mo Vaughn's streak continues at 11. Losses for Scott Erickson, and Erickson in some trouble here with runners on the corners and score tied at one. Tim Raines rips it off of Ken Herbeck's glove. Lance Johnson scores. Knobloch threw it away, and the runners move up. Next batter, Joey Cora. Soft fly to right. Dave McCarty coming on, coming on, not coming on enough. Falls off his glove. Ron Karkovice scores 3-1 Sox. Fifth inning, 4-1 Twins. Fernandez gets Bernie Brito with the high heat. So the Sox win at 4-1. They go to 10-4 against the Twins this year. For Fernandez, seven innings of three-hit ball. He's now won four of his last five starts. He didn't walk a soul. Erickson has the most losses in the bigs. The third-place Royals in Milwaukee against Cal, who has been anything but cold. Eldred gunning for his fourth straight win. Gets Wally Joyner on the whiff. In the ninth, Brewers lead at 1-0. Phil Garner thinks Eldred has enough left for the shutout. That's wrong. Joyner gets one he can handle, takes him out of the park. So now we're tied at one apiece. Pick it up. Bottom of the ninth inning. Darrell Hamilton on first. John Jahai at the plate. Base hit off the pitcher, off the shortstop, and into the outfield. Hamilton scores all the way from first base, and the Brewers go on for the 2-1 victory. Eldred continues his hot streak with the four-hitter. Robin Yacht moved into a ninth-place tie with Al Kaline on the all-time games played list. Robin Strong. He had the seven-game winless slide. Todd Benzinger in for Will Clark, facing Jack Armstrong. That from the left side takes him out of the park. Giants up by a score of 2-0. 3-1 Giants in the fifth. Chuck Carr an idea about bunting. Everybody moves in, right? And Carr responds. Not just a little looper, a big looper. Out of the park, he looped it. His fourth of the year, so it's 3-1 Giants. But San Francisco had put this one out of reach. Benzinger in the eighth, a man on. This time from the right side. Gets it out. His second of the game, fourth of the year. Giants up 5-1. That would be your final. He's only the second guy to do it this year. Homer from both sides of the plate in the same game. Bobby Bonilla has done it a couple of times. After Bad sign for any pitcher. But for uh, the Phillies, Lenny Dykstra took advantage. John Crook took advantage. Dave Hollins took advantage. The ball was flying out. Phillies had a 6-3 lead for Kurt Schilling as they were playing long ball. But remember, the flags were blowing out when Philly pitchers were on the mound, too, weren't they, as we followed the ball into the stands? Yes, they were still blowing out. Now, with the bases loaded, tie game, bottom of the 11th. There it goes! Rick Wilkins, 0 for 15 against Philly, pitching for the year, 1 for 16. And there's the drive, Harry, and it wins the game by a count of 10 to 6. The Phillies don't look now have lost three extra inning games in a row after starting out 10 and 2. Wilkins slammer his first hit of the year against Phillies pitching, as I said. The Reds in St. Louis, where Jose Rijo was on the mound, and Jose Rijo won the game. Look at that ERA in his last 10 starts, 1.1. 10 to 3 the final. The Reds have won 4 of 5. The Cards have lost 8 of 10, and they're now in third place in the NL East. 
We'll explain that in a moment. As for the Mets and Houston, Mark Portugal having his best year for the Astros, but it didn't help as Maddox wins his third game out of the pen for the Mets. Bobby Bonilla hit his 30th home run. Great catch by Ryan Thompson. Saved that game for the New York Mets in the ninth. Montreal and Colorado. As we go to Mile High Stadium, and uh, we see that... Uh, Andres Galarraga gets called out, and he doesn't like it. He shows up the ump, and the ump shows him the door. How about some Rockies futility? A botched Rockies rundown. Castilla can't tag the runner, and then Randy Reddy says, well, I bet you can't get me at home either. No. The Expos win it 6-1. to one. Darren Fletcher drove in three runs. Jeff Vassero wins his third in a row. The Expos have won five in a row to take over second place now from St. Louis. The Expos now nine and a half behind the Phillies. I'm out in the Bronx, Sterling Hitchcock, and this was kind of a Hitchcocky and night. No birds, but squirrels. And that's a scary sight for any pitcher. Frank Thomas takes this pitch from Hitchcock deep, and it lands among the Yankees. Great numbers. Joey Cora scores his 37th. Sox scout score opponents 122 to 64 in the first. And then it's Rock Reigns. 4-0 in favor of the Sox, his 14th. A good outing for the other lefty. Wilson Alvarez strikes out Wade Boggs three times. Ten Ks for Alvarez. Boggs had to leave after five. Bo Jackson catches in right and throws to third, and Mike Gallego is nailed. And Bo has something to smile about with a cannon. Top ninth, still 7-3. It's Reigns on the other side of the plate against Rich Monteleone. And this time to right, his second home run of the night. Four RBIs, three runs scored. Monday night, it was Todd Benzinger who did it from both sides of the plate. This time it is Rock Reigns. One more home run. Thomas sets a single season team record. Right now he's tied with Dick Allen and Carlton Fisk. The Yanks play Steve Farr on the 15 day DL. Jays and the A's from Oakland. A's first baseman Mike Aldretti. Looking like the all star he's replacing in Mark McGuire. Molitor to the 163 DP, but the stretch by Aldretti is the key. Next up, Tony Fernandez. Hard grounder and Aldretti dives and makes the play. The toss and the out, and McGuire says, Oh, well, we know you can feel, but can you hit, my friend? In the seventh, 2-1 Jays, Aldretti takes out lighter deep to straightaway center field. His ninth of the year. By the way, McGuire also has nine. We're tied at two in the tenth. Paul Molitor up. Lofts one. And it works because Roberto Alomar was on third, and he will tag up Henderson's throw nowhere near. Jays win 3-2, their third straight win after three straight losses in Seattle. Alomar extends his hit streak to 11 games with the double. Game two of the Red Sox Rangers series from Fenway. Rangers build a 4-1 lead in the six. Juan Gonzalez takes the rocket deep. Clemens goes six and two-thirds, gives up six runs, nine hits. And that is Gonzalez's 40th of the season. Rangers not only doing it with the bats, but the gloves. Mario Diaz, the backhander, and John Valentin is out at first. Kenny Rogers goes the distance. His sixth straight win. Rob Deere goes down to end the game. 8-1 your final. Deere 0 for 4. He's got one hit in his last 30 at bats. Kenny Rogers, the sixth win this month, tying a team record. Monday night was the 17th time Detroit had scored in double digits. Would they do it again against Randy Johnson? Dan Gladden was fooled. Uh, fool this. His 11th home run, 4 nothing Tigers. Johnson did K7 in the game. Lou Pinella and the Mariners came all the way back. Tied it at 4, then in the 8th with a man on 3rd and 2 down. It's Dave Magadan against Mike Kenneman. Magadan wins, singles to center, makes it 5-4 Mariners. And the score holds up. Second loss for the Tigers in 10 games. Mickey Tettleton went 0 for 4, and he struck out four times. To the House of Angels, California, and the Orioles. Angels Phil Leftwich carrying a one-hitter in the fourth. Mike Devereaux on first, and that's Harold Baines. And he turns it around. A two-run shot deep to right. O's up two zip. After that, double M's. Mike Musina takes over. In the fourth, he would strike out Tim Salmon looking. Chili Davis swinging. J.T. Snow. Swinging. We go to the fifth. Eduardo Perez, Kurt Stillwell, Chris Turner. That was six in a row. One short of the club record set by Sammy Stewart. Musina finishes with seven strikeouts. Orioles win the major league record. Find in the third facing Matt Williams with a man on, and Williams loops one. Will it drop? Dave Justice makes the catch to save a run and keeping the game scoreless through three. In the fourth, it's Barry's turn to make things happen, and he does with one swing, crushing the Maddox pitch for his 39th home run of the year. Bonds, four for four in this game. It was one nothing Giants. As for Bill Swift, in trouble in the fourth. Bases loaded, Dave Justice. Lining it the opposite way, Jeff Blauser comes in to score, and so does Ron Gant. It's 2-1 Atlanta, and they were fired up at Fulton County. 6-1 Braves in the fifth. Dave Justice gets some high heat from Dave Rigetti. Did that scare Justice? No way. 
because two pitches later, just as drills Rigetti for home run number 35, his sixth homer in six games, 8-1 Braves. Here's what you may have missed. Check out the long look Justice gives Rigetti, almost saying with his eyes, brush back this, Rags. Braves win it. <laughs> 8-2. Atlanta winning their fourth straight against the Giants. Maddox winning his fourth straight decision. Dave Justice drove in half of Atlanta's runs. So what satisfies Mr. Justice more? From his offense. Paul Four Wagner in the, the dirt. In the Tim dirt. Wallach was on 30. Nine. Comes Swan in. The Dodgers grab a 1-0 lead. Bottom two, though. Pirates Dave Clark is at the plate. And he goes to the opposite pitch. field for a home run off Gross. His sixth of the year. And it is gone. And the Pirates go on to win at 6-2. The Bucks outfield accounting for eight of the 12 hits Tuesday. Randy Tomlin underwent arthroscopic surgery on his left elbow out for the season. The Dodgers have signed their top pick, Darren Dreifert. Phillies and Cubs from Wrigley, top eighth, bases loaded. And who's at the plate? Mariano Duncan. Shh, everybody be quiet. Hits a single to center that is misplayed by Sammy Sosa. That allowed Dykstra to score from third. Phillies go on to win this one rather easily. As Lenny slides in safe. Seven to zip the final score. Ben Rivera, the pitcher, benched last Saturday. Missed a start. This was his first complete game in 23 starts and his first shutout in 11 months. Expos and Rockies, rough night for Roberto Mejia. It's a fair catch. Everybody get away. Roberto, get the ball. Forgot all about it. Things didn't get any easier, although you can say he kept his eye ooh, on the ball on that play. Rocky for Mejia. Expos rookie Will Cordero had no problem. Drove in four runs, including this two-run shot off of Greg Harris. Montreal, no fair catches. They put up two touchdowns, win 14-3. Over 46,000 on hand to watch. So home and away, more than 6 million fans have seen the Rockies play. Gooden left the game in the fourth with a sore shoulder, and by the way, Bobby Bonilla wore a safety pin in his ear. That really happened. By the way, Reds in St. Louis, Rob Dibble wondering if he'll still be a Red by night's end. He was called upon to protect a one-run lead, bottom of the ninth, cards a two-on, but Bernard Gilkey goes the opposite way, and it goes right by Jacob Brumfield. Nice try. Ozzy Smith ties it up. Todd Zeal comes in with a game-winning run as Dibble blows the save and suffers his second loss, and Dibble possibly with his mind on wearing Yankee pinstripes. Instead, he is still a red. Ozzie Smith and Todd Zeal each had a pair of hits. Padres, well, they were losers in Florida. Gary Sheffield homered in his first game against his old team. 